Hi, I'm Aaron Stash with the Electric Home Show. We're here in the Saugenash neighborhood of Chicago. We're gonna check out an all-electric home retrofit. I'm Aaron Stash. Welcome to the Electric Home Show. Hi, I'm Aaron Stash with the Electric Home Show. I'm here with Chris Muhammad from Going Green Home Solutions. Chris, they put the two tallest guys in the <laughs> shortest room in the house. But tell us a little bit about your company and kind of sure. what you guys do. Sure. So Going Green Home Solutions, we are a, a full line HVAC company. Um, we do all facets of air conditioning, mostly residential, um, some light commercial. Um, we do boilers, we do furnaces, we do um, all electric heat pumps. And we do, of course, central air conditioning and all of its many facets. Um, we do specialize and try to always provide clients with the most efficient solutions yeah. for their heating and air conditioning. Oh, yeah. So our thing is efficiency. And so going green home solutions, we try to look at the whole system of your house, airflow, um, the efficiency of the equipment, and what we can do to make the house house more, most comfortable right. for, for the client. So that's Fantastic. essentially what so we So you've do. got the full service. You can yes. do it all. Yes. So in this home, you know, we're talking mm -hmm. about Jeff's all electric home. Yep. We've got the Mitsubishi system behind yep. us, but mm -hmm. tell us about like what was here before. Yeah. So this was uh, pretty much a shell. I mean, it, it's a great home as they say, good bones. So everything was in good shape structurally, but he wanted to have a home that was, um, had better insulation, and that had an all-electric heating system where he didn't have to use gas at all. And that, in essence, was why we were called. And um, we came out, we assessed the heating needs, the air conditioning needs. And so we took that data and put that in our software, which does the load calculation for the house. And then it, it brought us a more accurate okay. a picture of how much heating and how much cooling was needed in, in the winter and the summer. So tell us a little bit more about that software. You're not just like, well, I think this uh, house yeah. needs this big of a unit. No. So we use software, Write Soft, and then there's another um, uh, software used called Cool Calc that sometimes can be used for just minor projects. And what that is, is we measure the rooms. We measure the square footage. We put the types of windows that are in the mm -hmm. house, the doors. Um, we look at... Um, you know, what type of roof is on the house. Okay. So you're case. doing this whole calculation with the software and these different algorithms and things like that yes. to be able to say, hey, this particular home needs, needs this much heating and yes. this much cooling. And we're in Chicago. Yes. So this is our temperatures. Yep. If you were in California or New York or something, good, it's all yeah, going to change. Good right? point. So the software, we have to put the region we're in. And so we'll have a baseline temperature in Chicago. Typically zero degrees is our baseline in the winter. And then, you know, in, in the summertime, 95 usually. And then we put that data in and it will work around those parameters. In Arizona, yeah. it's going to be different. Florida is going to be different. Sure. When you do that, it results in a, in a project where the, the client is much more comfortable with their system, you know, right. and how comfortable they are and the savings that they have in terms of their electric utility and their gas utility. Because it's sized appropriately for Correct. their house. Correct. Gotcha. So in this case, we're looking here, we've got an air handling unit yes. from Mitsubishi. So yep. kind of talk us through what we're seeing in this instance, yes. and then also what is throughout the house. Yes, so um, we took advantage of the existing duct system. Um, we always, this is, this is a retrofit situation where there was a gas furnace and the gas furnace um, we took out, but we used the existing ductwork, which goes through the whole house. This replaced the gas furnace. It is an all electric heat pump. So in here you have a coil. Mm -hmm. This is a two ton heat pump, which uh, important point to make, yeah, but um, it's really important in colder climates. We size the heat pump to the cooling load because there's okay. such a disparity. Because there's a, such a disparity between the cooling and heating loads in, in, in Chicago. And in, in the summertime, we're trying to cool 90 degrees down to 70, for example. That's mm -hmm. only a 20 degree difference. Sure. In the wintertime, we're trying to heat 0, 10, 20 degree air up to 70, right? right. 50, 60, 70 degree difference. So in those cases, um, we, we don't want the heat pump to be oversized. Okay. Because oversized, if we were to size the heat pump for the heating load, it would short cycle in the summertime okay. because it's too much cooling. And we're in Chicago, and I think, you know, the biggest challenge with heat pumps, people are like, it doesn't work in a cold yeah, climate, right? right? So this is definitely going to ramp down in terms of efficiency if yes. it's negative five degrees Correct. Fahrenheit out. Correct. But it's still running at some capacity. Absolutely. And then we can kick in the backup yep. during the polar vortex. Yes, when we need it. Gotcha. And so what I, you see here is yeah. a coil. This gets hot, okay? So just like the air conditioning coil in, in 
your home gets cool in the yeah. in the an air summertime. conditioner is a one way heat pump. One way, exactly. Two way, exactly. Air conditioner. So this exactly this coil gets hot. The blower blows over the coil, which heats the air up mm -hmm. and circulates it through the home, just like a normal furnace would. Yeah. If we get to sub-zero temperatures on certain days, and there aren't a lot of those days, yeah. like we, we might have a week, we might have, you know, a few days in the winter where it's minus 10, minus 13, or a polar vortex yeah. here or there. In those cases, we do have electric backup heat. Okay. Um, we can also do gas backup heat. You know, in this case, he wanted to be all electric to take advantage of that. And so we have our heating kit that goes on top of the air handler. Right. Air and handlers from here this down. This is basically like a toaster oven exactly. inside here. Okay. Exactly. And so that gives you just additional heat, you know, on top of the heat pump. Okay. Just to provide it when needed. And the nice thing is Mitsubishi uh, has great technology where, you know, he has hyperheat or cold climate heat pumps, which are different than yeah. standard heat pumps. And those heat pumps heat 100% down to zero degrees and then near 90% down mm -hmm. to minus 14 or 13 degrees. So it's a really um, great unit, great system yeah. for, for cold, it's built for cold climates. And technology is continuing to evolve and get better and better. So right. I, I expect it's just gonna get better in the future. And I think other things we hear about electrification is, yes. well, how is this going to stress the grid? But mm -hmm. if I'm in Chicago and I have baseboard heating that's mm -hmm. all electric, mm -hmm this is a more efficient more use efficient. of that electricity, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, much more efficient, much more efficient. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be lighter on the grid. So there was one um, auxiliary room that the client has where it's an office space that did not have any duct work. It was added later, it was actually a garage that okay. they converted into an office. So that room has no duct work whatsoever. And so what we did is did a standalone um, cold climate heat pump, just a 6,000 BTU, which is the smallest that Mitsubishi makes in that model. And then we put that wall mounted unit in that room and it he heated exceptionally according to the client through the winter. And so they've got two outdoor heat pumps okay. um, or outdoor units, one of which is attached to this, which is the single zone mm -hmm. ducted. And then we have one that's attached to the ductless gotcha. unit. So those outdoor units, similar to how you would have an air conditioner, Absolutely. but instead of the, the box, the you have square the box, slim. it's going sideways. Yep. But there's one big unit that powers this and then the smaller one on the side powers the office room. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's it. Gotcha. Okay. So we talked to Craig about all of the insulation and yep. how tight this house is, but now I'm not getting any fresh air in. Yeah. So what do we do about that? Yeah, so for that, if you can see over here, I'll slide out of yeah. the way. You have an ERV, okay, which is an energy recovery uh, ventilation unit. And so this unit is going to draw fresh air from the outside. Right. Um, to your point, when the house gets tighter, there aren't natural uh, changes of air. Older homes with leaky windows, well, the good side of that, right, is that you get fresh air that naturally will just change. Sure. Um, in a house that's tight for energy efficiency sake, efficiency sake um, you have to have an ERV, which will then pull fresh air out of the out, from the outside, and it will heat it and cool it or condition it, you know, and temper it so that you don't have really cold air blowing in the house in the winter or really, really hot air in the summer. And then this will then provide you that fresh air to make the air healthier. And then it has its own filter. Gotcha. So the filters change. So just like we have a media filter mm -hmm. here for the uh, air handling system, we also have a filter in here. And does this ERV connect to the existing ductwork yes, as does. well? Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, it does. So it's yep. bringing fresh air fresh into air the house. Fresh in, air into the house, through the whole house. Gotcha. Yeah, not just the basement. Even though there are some vents in the basement, you've got some, it's going into the whole house. All right. Yep. All right. Hi, I'm Aaron Stash. Thanks for watching The Electric Home Show. If you're a homeowner interested in a healthy, energy efficient electric home, reach out to us at electrichomecompany.com to schedule your free virtual coffee today. Thanks for watching. Hey, Aaron Stash with The Electric Home Show, back here with Chris Muhammad. We're talking about HVAC equipment, some of my favorite topics. So, is this a typical installation for you guys? Are you electrification specialists or heat pump specialists. You said you yeah. do everything, but like how often are you doing this? Uh, a lot more often okay. than previously. Um, yes, we do do it pretty frequently. We've done um, several projects over the last three or four years. Um, retrofits usually, not okay. as uh, we're not doing as many new uh, new construction projects, although we're open to it, but we do a lot of retrofits. We are based in the city, so we do a lot of older homes. And um, it's becoming more typical. But the technology has evolved much more in the last, you know, really like 10 years or so, where it's becoming much more viable, 
and much more um, possible for us to have a system that's all electric and have a heat pump that can heat right. in Chicago. A lot of clients uh, uh, that I speak with, they want to electrify for the environmental benefits a lot of times, yeah. which is great. They want to elect want to electrify to, um, you know, maybe decrease their gas usage. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some people don't want light gas in their home just for the risk of a fire and some of the things that that can cause. So there's yeah. a lot of different reasons. We, you know, when I was in trade school, one of the best metaphors and, and ways I would uh, I learned it and would explain it to clients is it's like taking a sponge. This is for air conditioning and heating. You take a sponge, put it in a bucket absorb as much water in that bucket and you take it to another bucket and you squeeze it, right? Yep. It's a way of transferring heat from one place to another. Mm. That's all your air conditioner or heat pump does. It absorbs heat in the winter from outside yeah. and it transfers that heat to a coil and brings it in the house. In the summertime, you're going to take that, you know, um, uh, heat from in the house. It's the reverse cycle, yeah. you know, and then it's going to pump it outside. Pumping it out, yeah. Yeah, and that's why in the summertime you put your hand over your air conditioner. It feels warmer than the surrounding air. That's the heat, literally the heat coming from the house going to the outside. Right, so, right. Simple no, I like understand that. That's it. great. That's, <laughs> so I was talking about this a little bit, and we were talking about the electric resistance backup. But yes. this is the electric heat lockout control. Yes. Tell, tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so, so this is wired in tandem with the internal controls of the air handler. And what this does, it has its own outside sensor. So you see this wire here? Yep. Uh, it can be programmed based on the client. So the client can kind of play with this. Like if they find that they're comfortable with just the heat pump down to a certain temperature um, or whatever that temperature is where they're not comfortable, they can program this to kick on at that temperature, okay. to so, kick the electric heat on using that outside, outside sensor. So if it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside, I can set this to, to 10, 10 degrees and it's going to switch over now and give you that extra additional gotcha. heat at that temperature. But it's really up to the client to play with it and, and get their comfort level, but it can be changed and adjusted. Gotcha. Yep. And I think what I've seen with these and folks that have put in heat pumps and maybe not in your experience, yes. but they're actually setting these lockouts to 40 degrees oh, yeah. or a really high temperature. Oh, yeah. And then they're using this backup resistance heat probably when they don't need it. When they to, don't need it. Because yeah. whoever installed it, again, not yes. you guys, yes. didn't trust the heat pump sure. to work below these other temperatures. Well, to that point, this client actually just uh, told me that he turned this off completely at a certain point in the wintertime uh, and just ran just with the heat pump and it did just fine. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's good to have the extra surety to know that you've got the adequate heat. But in many cases, especially when you add spray foam insulation, especially when you, you know, uh, improve your windows, those things change the, the envelope dramatically. Right. It's all working all together working as a together. system, right? Yep. All, all right. working together. And then yep. what's the upkeep for all this? We talked about filters, like how yep. long should this last? Yes. What do I need to do as a homeowner? Good question. Um, annual maintenance is always good. So once a year, we recommend we come out and we do things where we clean the drains. You know, we inspect the coils, make sure that we don't have any accumulation of debris. Usually, as long as the filters are changed, which should be changed, um, and it depends on the, the house, but twice a year for these uh, HEPA filters, sometimes mm -hmm. it can require more than that. Um, and it's simple. You just well, this is a pretty big filter. It's too, a big right? filter, yeah. but it's but it's pleated. So it's got increased surface area, you know, so it's able to collect a lot more and it's a much more efficient and better for airflow. Um, so this should be changed regularly. Very important. The humidifier pad should be changed annually. Um, we go through and check controls. We check wiring just to make sure that, you know, nothing shook loose and that everything is operating correctly. And we check voltages, amperage, mm. everything like that. For the average homeowner, though, the biggest thing is filter changes. And you'd be surprised how often um, just ignoring that or forgetting to do that can yeah. cause issues with the equipment. If you do that and you have it checked out annually, this equipment should last certainly 15, 20 years or longer. I All mean, right. it, it really, really can. Here's our quick public service announcement. Yep. Pause this video, go check your filter, change it, and then come back. <laughs> Chris, this is fantastic. So a big question is gonna yep. be, what does a system like this cost? Is it yeah. more expensive, less expensive, similar to a traditional? It, like it, it's, it's becoming comparable to a traditional system. It can be a little bit more expensive, but with the rebates, those rebates are helping to offset that cost. So I would say uh, it's probably 10 to 20% more 
than a traditional gas furnace okay. with those rebates. Um, but I think as the demand increases in, in pricing uh, changes, it will become on par with, with traditional systems, you know. So, How about yeah. from an operating perspective? So this is obviously oh, yeah. using a electricity it's, versus gas and yeah. prices are going to fluctuate, but how can I estimate the operating cost? Yeah. So one thing that I would say with it is look into your gas usage. You can look at your bills for the last year and kind of look at how many cubic feet per hour you used um, and then look at your kilowatts. Right. And then when you're assessing it, the big decision to make really, if you're going to go electric is, do you want gas backup or do you want electric backup? Mm -hmm. Electric backup heat can be a little more expensive. Again, the big thing is to size the equipment properly. Right. Make sure your home is sealed properly, et cetera. And then when you do that, typically the heat pump can keep up. You know, in lot. this case, he did everything, right? Yep. We did all the air sealing yes. and the insulation yep. and, and extra air sealing yep. and windows, but everybody's got a budget. Yep. And if I've got a finite budget yep. and I need a new furnace, yep maybe a hybrid situation where it's dual fuel absolutely is going to allow me fit. to do that yep. when i don't have the ability to do the air sealing absolutely is that fair? it's fair and we do a lot we do a lot of those systems um we just took care of a client who went with two really high efficiency gas furnaces but they have uh and mitsubishi makes what's called a IntelliHeat coil okay where this coil is like a traditional evaporator coil goes on top of the furnace and then you're still using that heat pump, but whenever that we get to that point where we need backup heat, it'll switch it off and turn the gas furnace on. Gotcha. So all the options are out there, and, and even those systems qualify for rebates. They qualify for discounts from ComEd in terms of sometimes your utility rates that you're going to pay every month. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, a lot of that is is here. Good, you know? good. Yeah, I would say on the electric heat um, component, definitely check out your utilities rates. Some utilities have special rates for customers that have all electric heat. I know in the Chicago area for ComEd, that is definitely true, but you have to request that from the utility to have your distribution facility rate changed to an all electric heat system. All right, Chris. All right. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Take care. I'm Aaron Stash. Thanks for watching The Electric Home Show. Like and subscribe for more. If you're an industry professional interested in joining our network, reach out to us at electrichomecompany.com. Thanks for watching.